Welcome to another news roundup for you cozy and farming games lovers. We have so much to catch up on from Echoes of Plum Grove, that new farming game that might be the answers to many of our requests finally getting a release date, Coral Island getting an amazing update soon, The Sims movie being confirmed, new games to play in April, and a lot more. Hello you gorgeous human being, it's Miss Bubbles. If you love everything farming and cozy games, make sure to squish the like and subscribe button so you never miss out on another video. Now let's get started with that start Valley 1.6 update that is breaking the internet and the last time I checked it had over 145,000 concurrent players smashing its previous record and it's all for good reason. Speculation has been around for a long time about when this update will be released and Concerned Ape finally decided to release it and said you know what a massive update is not enough I'm also putting the game on a discount. AAA companies take note of this. The 1.6 patch has a long list of new features including new festivals, home renovations, new pet types, new farm layout, visual improvements, quality of life changes, and most importantly, which was the initial intent behind the update, additional mod support. Concerned Ape did recommend players to try Stardew Valley's new update without any mods in the beginning, but I'm still curious, if you use any mods in your save file, which ones do you recommend? Another cozy title you can play right now and check this out, it's a really cute and cozy one, perfect for cat lovers. If you don't like cats, you're probably bubbly but if you do fit my cat will be the one for you this is an adorable 2d puzzle game with unique hand-drawn illustrations where you're trying to see how many cats you can fit in a box i mean isn't that what cats usually do if i fit i sit and they're just trying to be everywhere where they shouldn't be well how about you give them a little hand when doing that here you have 90 cardboard box levels with tons of cute cats of different sizes colors and shapes to pick and rotate you have some obstacles at times where you might find a yarn ball or even an entire cat house inside so you're gonna have to find out a way to make the cats fit in. The soundtrack is relaxing so you're gonna enjoy some fun tunes as you play through the puzzles and you know I always struggle to find a puzzle game that is easy enough for my noob self so when I find one you bet I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna leave the link for you in both my pinned comment and the description box so you can check it out because I know you're gonna love this and thank you Red Deer Games for sponsoring this video and being such incredible supporters of the channel. If you end up getting fit my cat let me know what you think now back to more updates disney dreamlight valley released its new update called the laugh floor this one brings a new realm door to open up scrooge mcducks gets an upgrade so once you reach the store's maximum level you will get access to a lot more daily items to purchase we also got a new monsters path which i believe disney's dreamlight valley's version of a battle pass system or ba battle pass membership whatever you want to call it and of course mike wazowski and Sully from Monsters Inc. are the new characters in the game with their own friendship quests. The next update is suspected to release anytime between mid to end of April. And even though I have the game on my Nintendo Switch, then I bought it for myself on PC with the DLC. I'm waiting for all the updates or at least most of the updates to be out so I dive back in, which I know I might be missing out on some cosmetics here and there, but I really don't mind. But if you're still waiting before you dive in just like I am, still make sure to log in and check your mailbox because the devs are frequently leaving some goodies for us so I don't want you to miss out on those. Next up we have Traveler's Rest receiving a new fish update. You can now catch 30 different fish to cook with, use as wall decorations, and register into your collection. You also have a new area added in which is the beach along with two new characters Hikari, a mentor in the art of fishing, and Wilson, a castaway who can turn any piece of junk into art. And if you're wondering, like, hey, what is Traveler's Rest? I've never heard about it before. Let me tell you, this is an incredibly cozy game where you run your own inn, you tend to customers, you make their stay a welcome one, while also farming, gathering resources to craft new items to use. And it's an early access, but it gets frequent updates and new features added in from the devs, which is always a great sign. So you can play in early access if that interests you on Steam, I highly recommend you do, and if you do, let me know what you think. Next up, my time at Sandrock's Switch port is not abandoned and the devs are working on its 1.2 update. This one is gonna improve the visuals and the performance, and seeing this gives me so much hope because Man oh Man is the Switch port an absolute mess. Some gameplay captures from the devs on Twitter shows consistent 30 FPS, and the game looks more colorful as well. A Steam update made its way to PC players recently to optimize the graphics, make some 
visual and audio changes and address some gameplay bugs. I adore my time at Sandrock, but when I played it on the Switch, it was a complete disappointment. It was barely running with pop-in, stuttering, and had constant motion sickness inducing frame drops. So let's see how the Switch update goes when it goes live on March 26. Onto the games that you can play in April, here are a few that caught my attention. First we have Planet Isles releasing on April 3rd on PC. This is a new cozy game from Mythic Owl, the devs behind Harmony's Odyssey, which received very positive reviews on Steam. Planet Isles combines strategy and creativity where you can build and transform barren planets and make them flourish. Its board game type of gameplay will add some challenges for you, so your decisions matter. It reminds me a lot of Terra Nil and Dorf Romantic if you've played either, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this one's gonna go. Next up, published by Whitethorn Games, you know I freaking adore them, and developed by Balloon Studios, who I believe this is their first game. We're talking about Botany Manor. This one has your play as a retired botanist called Arabella who lives in a manor in 19th century England. You're gonna explore your house and gardens, research plants, and figure out the best conditions for them to grow and flourish. I love the art style and color palettes and I'm intrigued in how the clue system will work and whether this is gonna be an accessible game with a hint system for people like myself who actually need some guidance in puzzle games. If you love exploration and puzzle games, this is perfect for you. It releases on April 9th on PC, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Now here's one that I'm so excited for you to learn about and I'm pretty sure you never heard about it before, but lucky you, I have a review for it, and I'm talking about Moonglow Bay. This one is finally making its way to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Switch on April 11th. It's developed by Bunny Hug and published by Coatsync, who also published games like Gang Beasts, Cake Bash, and Islanders. So what do we have here? There are over 150 aquatic species for you to catch, lots for you to share with the local aquarium, mythical monsters to meet, all while you help rebuild the town and build friendships. The voxel art style is unique and beautiful, and I had a fun time playing this one, and I loved its take on the fishing gameplay loop, but I complained about the bugs and the variety in dialogue when I played it back then. So I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts about it if you end up checking it out for yourself. Remember Europa? That beautiful game where we saw trailers of you jumping and gliding, running and flying across stunning landscapes while you solve mysteries in the ruins of a full utopia? It's coming to PC on April 16 and it looks so mesmerizing. The world looks inviting to explore and the free flowing movement through lakes, meadows and mountains will be fun to see. It's developed by Helder Pinto and published by Future Friends Games who also recently published Summer House and overwhelmingly positive reviewed Cozy Gem on Steam. And if you're not so sure, it does have a demo that you can check out for yourself right now and then decide if you want to buy the full version. Also, Planet of Lana is coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Switch on the same day and it's already on Steam with very positive reviews. You play as a young girl accompanied by her cute pet friend and together you're on a rescue mission through a colorful world full of puzzles, adventures, and cinematic scenes all framed by a sci-fi saga stretching across centuries and galaxies. While it's colorful aesthetic makes me think like this does look a little bit cute, it's other mechanics such as stealth, relying heavily on your reflexes and challenging puzzles makes me weary if I should tell you to try it out so keep that in mind. Regardless it looks beautiful and I'd love to check it out myself sometime. And I wanted to make sure that you check out this one as well. Odd Sparks and Automation Adventure is perfect for those of you who love designing automated workshops and here you have sparks who carry and craft everything so you're gonna lead them into combat and explore this colorful fantasy world either in solo or co-op mode. I love that there are added quests from the villagers and I hope that this will encourage us to keep playing, making the gameplay loop more engaging as we also explore a procedurally generated world. It's developed by Massive Mini Team and I've been following and interacting with them on social media for a while. They are a lovely team so I'm definitely rooting for them. So if this interests you, add it to your wishlist and you can try the demo out. It will release in early access on April 24th on PC. Now that we have the games releasing in April out of the way, there are a couple of game news that we also need to catch up on. Stairway Games finally gave us some information about its roadmap and as a massive fan of this title, you have no idea how excited I was when I was reading about this. In part one of the two-part series, here are a couple of things that we learned. The 1.1 update is bringing us town rank S, which is the new end game goal. It's also adding attractions that our townies can go to like a hot air balloon and gym, museum rank S, where you kind of bring dinosaurs back to life, heritage rank S to unlock the the full story of the island's heritage, the giant story finale, as well as tourist and hang 
Hangouts to invite your favorite dateable NPCs out twice a week. Let me know who you're romancing, new ranch animals, new outfits and decor, and a lot more. We were told that the second part of the series will be revealed sometime in April, but I'm curious, when do you think the 1.1 update will go live? I'm speculating something between June and August. House Flipper 2 released a new trailer all about its spring DLC, but it also pushed the console release to April 10th. I love the original House Flipper, you know, it made it to my 10 out of 10 cozy games, and the sequel was slowly taking its place, but I do want to see the next updates that the devs are bringing this year to address the shorter nature of the campaign this time around, and overall lack of content, which let's face it, the original had a lack of content in the beginning, but the different updates and DLC helped expand them. The spring update is bringing us new furniture, decor, and mechanics that the players have been asking for for a while, such as going to sleep to rejuvenate your characters, selling stairs and roofs directly from the campaign, resizing objects which makes placing them easier to navigate, and we also get four new buyers to meet, a new house with its own missions to complete, and a new special job from Nico and Carol. I also want to show you three game announcements that I'm sure you're going to be excited about. Sugar Dew Island is a new cozy farming game where you run your own farm shop, and as someone who loves running shops in game, this is right up my alley. You can sell items, negotiate prices, gather resources, craft, have pet companions, and complete quests to help heal the island. The devs confirmed a Nintendo Switch board, which is always good to see, but they also asked their fans on Twitter what they thought about the rumors of a Switch 2. As happy as I am to see a Nintendo Switch port confirmed, I really hope that it doesn't take a long time to make its way there. The game also passed its 50,000 stretch goal on Kickstarter, with a few stretch goals on the horizon that the devs will reveal soon. I'm certainly excited for this one and would love to know if you heard about it. If you're looking for a cozier and cuter version of Pal World, Creatures of Ava might be right up your alley. This one uses your empathy to guide you, so unlike Pal World, it doesn't seem like you're gonna be hurting any of your pals. And what's interesting is the meaningful narrative that the devs in Verge Studios are promising us, where you play as a 22-year-old nature adventurer navigating an immersive expedition. The world is rich in ecosystems and you play a vital role in the planet's natural balance, so you're gonna need to connect with the planet and the creatures themselves rather than just going and catching them. Through the story, your goal is to rid the planet from the withering and infection that is driving creatures to behave aggressively. So you have over 20 creatures to catch using the power of song with your flute. This definitely caught my eye and made it to my wish list. Echoes of Plum Grove might revolutionize both the social aspect but also overall gameplay loop of farming games. The devs posted a quick video on Twitter going over some of the frequently asked questions and we found out that you can marry a villager after their spouse dies no matter the reason of death. There are rival marriages plenty of gossip, so for those of you who love to romance everyone and their mother, you better be careful here because you're gonna get caught. And you can also play at night, so I'm guessing we don't have to rush at 12am to sleep in game, and there will be a dress up mode. The best part is that we also got a release date, April 29th, and you bet I'm extremely excited for this one and we'll be reviewing it on the channel. Oh, and did you see this? Apparently there is a The Sims official movie in the works and it's being produced by Margot Robbie. Now we don't know much about it and we don't even have a trailer to check out just yet, but it makes me wonder what would the story be about? Considering The Sims don't have a specific plotline like let's say a Witcher game does, what if they bring some of The Sims 2 stories and kinda expand on them? Maybe unfolding the plot of the Goth family? Or how about the Caliente family and the drama? Or perhaps we get a story about the Pleasant family? Or how about a world that has households across Sims 1, Sims 2, Sims 3, and 4? I mention Sims 2 the most because the families there are the ones that resonated with me, but I'm interested in knowing what would you be interested in seeing and which actors would you like to see in this movie? Let's take a look at a couple of the comments that we got from last month's roundup and first up we have Aries Paw saying yay come back to Witch of Burn Island it's such a cool story and so much to do. You do need a few hours to get into the drive of things and the wiki has grown a lot too. I'm certainly interested in Witch of Fern Island I do want to check it out I did reinstall it into my PC but if you played it let me know how it is. I checked the Steam reviews they don't seem all that great like there's good reviews, there's really bad reviews, so 
kind of like I do want to get into it, but also because of the backlog, I'm just like, hmm, should I? So let me know if you think I should. And there was also a comment from Adam saying, so happy those videos finally saw the sunlight and I love a dash of humor about the last events. We're here for you, loving and waiting for the content. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be back. I'm really happy that you guys, like we ha we kind of have to laugh at the situation because sometimes it can be so difficult to deal with so much trauma happening all at the same time. And you know what? I'm just like, just gonna laugh about the situation because I, you know, because you know, as a Lebanese person as well, like sarcasm is in my blood. I can sometimes be so stressed out, but yes, yeah, still just find light about the situation. So good times for being hacked. That was a really, really fun time. Let me know what you guys think about today's news roundup. Are you excited about The Sims official movie coming out? Or how about Echoes of Plum Grove finally getting a release date? I'm so excited about this one. And do you think my time at Sandrock is finally gonna run properly on the Nintendo Switch? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thank you again to Red Deer Games for sponsoring this video. And if you're a farming games lover, I have a new essay that I think you're gonna love. It's called Why Do Farming Games Suck? So I recommend you watch it next. Thank you for watching a shout out goes to my youtube and patreon bubblies for making these videos possible and a special thank you to jake logan the game dimension and stephanie for going the extra mile until next time stay bubbly